you guys, um, I wanted to sit down and make a video um, and just talk about my late miscarriage that I had um, a week and one day ago today. Uh, I actually debated whether or not I should do this and I thought no, why would I? That seems ridiculous. They know what happened and that's fine. But I was watching some YouTube videos and I'm sure you guys know this, but you start at one and then you see another one that looks good so you click on that and before you know it you were watching a daily vlog and now you're watching how an alligator swims in a swimming pool like it you totally get on a like YouTube tangent and that's what happened and unfortunately they weren't happy happy videos but I got thinking that I do want to tell my story because there could be other women out there and other couples and families who are experiencing this or who might experience this and maybe this video will help them to heal and understand and just know that they're not alone. So that's why I've decided to do this video. So yes, so here we go. <laughs> uh, for everybody who's new, um, we found out we were pregnant and it was not expected at all. My husband had a vasectomy uh, about four years ago and the reason he had the vasectomy is because we had suffered through 11 miscarriages all before 12 weeks. The longest was uh, 11 weeks and you know we said okay obviously this is just not supposed to happen and so that's what we did. He had a vasectomy. Uh, we were fine. Uh, you know, three, four years, nothing. And then I went into the hospital and they changed so many of my medications. <laughs> and, th you know, of course they know my history. They know Dan had a vasectomy. They know, you know, everything. And, uh, a lot of the medications they were giving me were making me extremely uh, fertile. We didn't, we didn't really know this. Uh, I do take uh, metformin for my diabetes and that is a known uh, fertility drug, <laughs> um, which I knew, but I've been taking it for I don't know how long. But some of the other things they were putting me on and trying me on boosted my fertility. So, you know, great, right? No one really mentioned it because it's not really a huge concern. Well, somehow, uh, yeah, somehow one of Dan's guys got through. And I have no idea how. Uh, we looked it up. We talked to the doctors. And they're like, it's not impossible. It's It's possible. And in fact... I've actually watched many, many videos about people who have gotten pregnant after a vasectomy. So it is possible. It, it can happen. Uh, so we, when we first found out, I had taken a dollar store pregnancy test. Why dollar store? Because it was more of a joke. He had a vasectomy. There was no way I was pregnant. So I did it and it was positive and I kind of chuckled and you know, I showed Dan and he's like, yeah, right. I'm like, it is dollar store. I mean, right? Like how, how accurate can it be? Well, apparently it's accurate. So, uh, I went to the doctor and sure enough, I was pregnant. Um, and not only was I pregnant, I pretty much skipped the first three months of my pregnancy. No idea. I had no morning sickness, uh, none of the usual symptoms uh so i was by the time we were confirmed um that you know they had been doing ultrasounds they were measuring 
trying to calculate with my cycle, which is completely wonky anyway. So, uh, and finally it was determined I was, well, first I was nine weeks. That's the beginning. And I went from nine weeks to 13 weeks. So I like gained an entire month in like a week. <clears throat> Uh, so, yeah, so, boom, I'm 13 weeks pregnant. What? How am I 13 weeks pregnant? And then to find out, I'm 13 weeks pregnant with twins. Like, Dan and I, it took us days to process this. It took us, you know, time to, like, how on earth is this possible? Like, why is this happening? I don't understand. Is this, this is it. These are our miracle babies. This was actually supposed to be, you know, like, <laughs> how does that happen? I don't know. So everything was great. Um, babies looked good. They had the strong heartbeats already. Like it was phenomenal. It was just, it was crazy. And then we found out our due date was May 24th, which is actually my grandma's uh, birthday. And, um, she's since passed, but it kind of like gave us, you know, that, oh, okay. So maybe there's a little divine intervention here. So we told our family and it was awesome. Um, we told my sister and Devin and her husband, Devin, um, with some <laughs> balloons and Sherry cried and I cried and Devin was like, huh, what? I, <laughs> I was totally confused. It was awesome and uh, we told my brother and my sister-in-law and of course they live far away so we had to tell them via FaceTime is what we did. Yeah, FaceTime. But of course my brother works away from home so we had him on one phone, we had Darlene on the other phone. <laughs> so we told them, they kind of figured it out, they had their suspicions so... Um, and yeah, and after that, you know, the announcement went up on Facebook. You guys got the announcement. Everything was great. Um, it was pretty uneventful. Um, the probably beginning of December, I started feeling them moving around. And uh, around like, Christmas Day, Christmas Day, we were at my sister Sherry's place. Um, we had gone there for brunch and to open our gifts and to give them their gifts. And Dan and I were on their couch. And their couch is awesome. Like, you, it's a sectional, but you sit in it and you just like, okay, I'm here for the day kind of couch. And my brother-in-law was beside me. And, you know, we were all just kind of playing on our phones. And I'm sitting there and I can feel them, the babies moving and rolling and all of a sudden, you can see my stomach kind of popping up. And Devin sitting there, and I will always remember this and, and cherish it, but Devin looked at my stomach and he said, I can see that. And just the look on his face was just like, wow. Like, I will always remember that. It, it was it was amazing. Uh, so... That night, so Christmas day, or Christmas night, Christmas day night, we went to my other sister's uh, for Christmas dinner. And we were all there, and they have a dog. It's a huge dog, and I honestly do not know what it is. I think it's like a bull... I, I honestly don't know, I'm sorry. Um, but he, he didn't... He kept... He would sniff me, and then he'd bark at me. And Jason, my sister's... Uh, Michelle's husband or boyfriend she um, he said you know he probably can sense like the pregnancy the hormones and stuff so he pretty much kept his distance from me we were fine had dinner and then we were watching a movie and I just felt really really uncomfortable and you know I said to Dan I'm like I'm just not feeling great I'm just not comfortable so we headed home and the rest of the night was pretty uneventful. And then December 26th, which is Boxing Day here in Canada, um, Dan went back to work and I was woken up by some pretty bad cramps. 
that's basically what they felt like like menstrual cramps but worse and I was like okay what is this so I just kind of I got up you know I had a shower I you know just kind of started to try my day and the cramps were getting worse so I messaged Dan and you know I'm like can you get out of work and he's like well it would depend on why and he called me but I didn't I didn't let on it was as bad as it was I I didn't want him worrying and I was sure it was nothing I mean I was almost 19 weeks pregnant right nothing can possibly be wrong <clears throat> we live very close to our hospital here so I was I'm it's within walking distance it's like a five minute walk so I walked over to the hospital and uh, I went into emerge emergency department told them what was going on and they brought me in right away got me into a room um, I had to put gown on and I had to wait I had to wait for the doctor so I'm sitting there in this gown completely unflattering completely uncomfortable and I can actually feel something um, you know I can there's like something's wrong I look down and there's blood coming down my leg so I call the nurse and I'm like I've started to bleed and I, I don't know what to do so she got me in the stirrups and the doctor was paged at this point by the time the doctor got there I was bleeding pretty bad and he did an ultrasound and an internal exam and the ultrasound the ultrasound showed no heartbeats um, I started crying and you know I was in a lot of pain a lot of pain and um, at this point the doctor was like you know your babies are, have passed you know they're not he said they're not viable his, his bedside manner is not the best, I'll be honest. Um, but at that point, I was just scared because now I knew I didn't, I, the babies, you know, were gone. I mean, they were there, but they were gone. They weren't breathing. Um, you know, these beautiful miracles that the day before brought, you know, the most incredible reaction because they were moving and pushing on me and they were gone. They were just gone, just like that. There was no, there was no warning, there was no reason. Um, so at this point, you generally get or I got, well, you generally get two options. You can be induced and basically give birth or a d and &E. I would have chosen giving birth in a heartbeat. It's, um, there's no question no question at all but at this point I was hemorrhaging basically I couldn't get a hold of Dan so they just took me right in um they had to do an emergency d &E. um I didn't have a choice I didn't, I didn't have a choice. Um, plain and simple, I mean, it was my, it was my health on the line. But had I had a choice, I would not have done it that way. 
after everything was done, um, so once I was home, I messaged Dan to call me. He called me. I told him and he rushed home. I don't, I honestly have never seen him get home as quick as he did. I don't want to know how fast he drove home. And I talked to him and, you know, we cried together. We, we, we were heartbroken. We still are heartbroken. And we had named them uh, Travis, Allen, Gordon, Madeline, Victoria, May. Travis's name, Travis is a name from my side that means a great deal to me. And Alan is Dan's father's name and Gordon was, well Gordon is Dan's middle name. It was his dad's middle name and it was his grandfather's name. <laughs> and Gordon actually is also from our side, my side as well. And um, so that's how we came up with that. Um... For Madeline's name, we had always been set on Abigail, but we saw Madeline and we just, we fell in love with the name and it just felt right. And, um, so there's no, like, there's no, like, real family meaning behind Madeline. Um, her middle name, Victoria May. Victoria kind of covers a lot. It's, I, when we chose it, it was because of my grandmother from my mom's side. Victoria's been a name that's been used for the girls for a very long time. It was my grandmother's name. It was um, her mother's middle name, I believe. And then it's also on my other side. So my dad's mom, her mom was actually Victoria May. So that kind of worked out. <laughs> uh, and May is from her, from my, from my grandma there. And we loved it because Maddie May. And it was close to Maggie May for Rod Stewart. My family will understand that. <laughs> but yeah. In fact, we had given gifts to family from them and that was our way of announcing their name so um basically I had a incompetent cervix and that's why I lost our babies this is by far the hardest thing to go through uh, we've had really really good moments and really really bad moments and I think that's expected um I feel like I let down Dan. I feel like I let down a lot of our family. And uh, everybody was looking forward to these babies. And now they're gone. Um, so I've had a couple questions and stuff from you guys and, you know, feel free to ask me questions. I, I don't mind. I want to be as open about this as I can. Um, but one of the major questions I've had is, is Dan going to check into his vasectomy? Am I going to have a hysterectomy? 
um, you know, kind of what, what are our plans? Are we going to try again? Things like that. And the answer is simply, we weren't trying to begin with. <laughs> so to try again, when I, when we know Dan's had a vasectomy, like it's just, it's, I don't want to say it's silly, but it's just not realistic for us. Uh, Dan has had an appointment with his doctor. Um, he's been tested and everything was, he's sterile basically. Um, you know, the chances of it happening again is like one in a billion or something ridiculous. Um, no, I'm not having a hysterectomy. Um, my doctor, my doctor is not, she doesn't want to have to do it unless my periods get worse. Sorry, TMI. <laughs> so, no. We do not expect it to happen again. We... We, we know it's not in the cards for us and we are going to look at adopting, um, not right away. <laughs> um, that's kind of the driving force behind wanting to get our finances in order and you know just get our life back on track and probably next year we'll kind of start the classes and the home studies and things like that but for this year we want to take the year um, we want to take the year to one get ourselves on track and two really really research and I don't want to say pray but we just want to make sure that even adoption is going to be right for us um, fostering we know is not something that we would be able to do and the reason is because of me <laughs> Um, I get very attached, um, and, you know, having them, having a child in our home and caring for them and, you know, influence them and raising them for however long they're with us, whether that be, you know, a week or three days or six months or a year, once they leave, I would be heartbroken and... You know, I just, I know I couldn't do it. I know I would just be a complete mess. And yeah, so adopting is what we're looking at and thinking of. But again, we want to do our research. We want to understand the procedure. We want to understand what happens. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of where we are there. Um, yeah. So, yeah, that is, I think that's pretty much it. Um, I think I answered questions. Um, I hope you guys can understand how this is a very difficult time for us, how we're pushing through and we are, you know, dealing with things one day at a time, one hour at a time, and just making the best of the whole situation. We are leaning on family and, you know, that's kind of the best medicine for us right now. Um, you guys, I, I have no words. The the literally the outpouring of support and prayers and thoughts has been immensely overwhelming in a good way. I cannot thank you guys enough. I'm 
still trying to respond to emails and messages and everything, so bear with me, but um, thank you. Thank you for understanding, thank you for your patience, and thank you for being on this journey with us. And, yeah, thank you. And thank you for watching, and I hope that this video can help you, um, maybe give you hope that there's you know, light at the end of the tunnel if you've experienced this as well. And that's it. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye, guys.